Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. <clears throat> so just before we jump into the actual project itself, which I've already got edited, um, I want to let you know that this is actually part 13 of a video series that is exclusively up on Patreon, where we're basically going through and building a mixed reality project from scratch with full menu systems, permissions, and everything else. So I wanted to share this with everybody anyway, because I think a lot of people have been asking for it, and I think it's pretty cool. And the idea is that we can destroy walls in mixed reality and blow holes and stuff. So I'm going to release this one over on the YouTube. But if you want all the parts of this, so all 13 of the parts which are currently up, then you can access that through the Mega Thank You tier over on Patreon, as, long, as well as the project files for this whole thing, where we kind of walk you through it. But in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can do this destructible wall aesthetic. It doesn't display very well here because we don't have a skybox around our level to see it all that well. So sorry about that, that's gonna be in a different video. But in the meantime, to get this going, all you'll need to do is make sure that you have the Mixed Reality Utility Kit plugin installed as we use that later on down the line to attach these meshes to it. So we take a look at creating some actors. Uh, we already have an actor created for our walls, but it's just an actor, there's nothing special about that. And then the Mixed Reality Utility Kit Anchor Actor Spawner, which exists in the scene. Um, I could have re-edited the whole video and uploaded it, but I think it's absolutely fine to just do this. Um, if you've got any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments down below, I'll get to you. And if you've got, any, if you've got more important questions, like you need a reply straight away, then make sure you head over to the Discord. Uh, I'll probably be in there today for quite a bit. And then there'll be others in there as well who can help you out. We've got a mixed reality channel. So enough of me talking. Um, let's jump in and look at how we can destroy some walls. Hey everyone, welcome back. So in the previous video, we took a look at creating a system that we can use to detect our table, spawn a pistol, and then access it in the project on our desk in person. So what we're gonna do this one or this video, is we're actually going to take a look at how we can create destructible walls. So we spawn the gun, and then we can actually shoot holes in our actual room, which is really fun to do. Um, there's two steps to it. We've got to create our destructible wall mesh, um, and then we need to set up our pistol to destroy those parts of the wall. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to content, and we're going to create a new folder. And we're just going to call this chaos. Uh, chaos and then we're going to open this up the reason we're doing this is because the fracture tool that we're going to use inside of unreal creates a whole bunch of meshes and they're what we're going to use to represent our walls so what we need to do to before we actually create the fracture is we need a mesh to fracture and we know that the mixed reality and character spawner has the ability to stretch um, the scaling mode for a blueprint. So all we're going to do is we're going to create this blueprint as a, or this wall piece as a meter by meter square, and then we're going to stretch it to match our physical space. So what I did was I dragged in this cube, just going to get content, shapes, and then cube. And I just want to scale this in. Let's change it to unlit so we can see. And I just want to scale this in to represent the thickness of our wall. So if it's too thick, you're going to have more chunks and then you would have to shoot those away, which is a cool effect. But in this case, we just want this to be quite thin because we're just going to shoot through it for the first one. So I'm going to set this to X 0.04 and we can actually keep this here for now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to selection mode. We're going to go down to fracture. If you don't see this, you can go to two plugins. And in here, you can search for chaos. It will already be done for you. So you can see here, we've got chaos and then visual debugger, chaos editor is what we're using here. But I just thought I'd show you where those are. So with the mesh selected, the cube itself, we're gonna to go to fracture. I'm gonna select a new in the top left to create a new geometry collection asset. And then what that'll do is it'll ask us to choose a location. We're gonna just choose the chaos folder that we created. And then I'm going to call this uh, wall mesh underscore geometry clash. 
cache. Wall mesh geometry cache. We don't need to select anything else. Just make sure the folder is selected and then create geometry collection. And you'll see here it actually changes it to red. So what we can do now is we can actually use the tools on the left here, the fracture. So I'm going to use uniform. And you'll see that when I select it, it starts breaking up the actual mesh itself. So this is done by 20 by 20. And what I want to do is I found about 150 works quite nice for my room. It's going to be different for everybody else. So you could go up to 200. It's just going to make the part smaller. So 200 by 200. And we can actually leave it at that. So what's going to happen is this mesh, when we bring it into our scene, it's going to use the mixture out the utility kit to scale this up. And you'll see how those parts get bigger and stretch out. So you've got to keep that in mind. But the more parts you have, the more geometry is in your level, which is going to impact performance. Um, if you were to do this a bit more performant, what you could do is you could bring this into something like Blender and then delete all the internal faces. So every face you see down here, you could delete all of those and then that would allow you some more, uh, more leeway with your performance and your poly count. However, in this version, I'm going to leave it as it is because it can actually look quite good seeing the wall cracks. Whereas if you did it the other way, you wouldn't get that. So we're just going to go to Fracture, hit Fracture, and you'll see that it breaks it up for us. It looks a bit of a mess, don't worry about that. But because we set it to 200, you can go on the right, and you can see that we have 200 individual cubes. Well, 199 because it starts at zero. Cool. So before clicking anything else and off anything else, we want to go to the left here. And we'll see that there's an option here to convert selected geometry to static mesh. We want to select that and then we can leave everything as it is and we can just hit convert and it'll ask us to choose a location as well. I'm going to choose the same location. We'll just keep it with the same name and then you'll see that it'll go through and it'll convert all of those pieces to individual static meshes. It's going to ask us to save. So we just hit save and you'll see now in our content browser, we actually have all of those individual meshes for what it is. You could probably make this a bit more performant and create a dynamic shader material that gets the vertices position, but you're still gonna have to split up your mesh or fracture it in some way to make it be displayed. But in this case, this just looks quite nice. So it's a trade off between the performance and then the quality that you wanna go for. So we'll leave this as it is. What we can do now is we can actually leave this menu so we can go back to selection and we can delete all of these parts. So you can see because we took the geometry cache and we converted it to a static mesh, it's put it into the level for us. So if I'm able to select this, I don't know if it's gonna let me, we can then go through and select individual parts. And you can kind of see how we can see stuff through it, or at least we can see the side of the mesh that's in there. So we just wanna delete all of this because we're gonna spawn this in at runtime. But you can see how adding all of this in can be quite expensive. So just keep that in mind. Cool. So we've got our models and our geometry mesh. We can actually go through to our mixed reality and then environment actors folder, which we have for our wall face. And if we open this up, because we've already got it created and attached to our anchor actor spawner, we can go down to uh, wall face and we can see that it exists here for us and it's already set to stretch. We did this previously. So we're going to open up the wall face blueprint. We're then going to delete everything in there, including the static mesh. And what we're going to do is we're going to take all of those pieces that we created in our chaos folder. We want to ignore the geometry, geometry collection and we just want to scroll all the way down, hold shift to select all 200 elements and we're just going to drag this into our blueprint and when we release in the components folder it'll take a second but you see that it basically builds our wall for us and what we can do in here is we can then attach our poker hole material so anything that's on the poker hole material so the outside faces is going to show our physical space and what the camera sees and then anything on element one 
So we can see here, we've got element zero, that's gonna be our poker hole material. And then element, element zero is gonna be our poker hole material. And then element one is gonna be the inside faces. So that would stay white. And this is gonna act as your wall. So if we open this up and search for poker hole material, it should take a second, but it'll update all of them so we can actually see that material as black on the outside here. Okay, so that took a little bit of time, about five or six seconds. So I can hit compile. That also took some time just because there's a lot of elements in here. And then just save all and we can close that mesh down. So now what we can do is we can actually approach this two different ways. We could look at destroying each piece of the wall and each indestructible mesh, or we could look at setting them to hidden, and then we can do, in theory, some cool things with that later on down the line. So rather than destroying all of the parts with the gun, we're just gonna hide them and disable the collision. And the reason we're doing that is because we could, in theory, add all those parts that we destroy to an array and kind of make them build back up which would be really cool. I think, we, I think we might do that in another video. But um, for now, what we wanna do is we want to set up our collisions. And I realized I shouldn't have closed the wall blueprint. So environment actors, wall face. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of our parts in here. And we're gonna just change their collision preset to destructible. Because essentially that's what it is. It's a destructible mesh and we're gonna use that collision channel so when we get the hit component, which is one of these, we're not gonna destroy a random weapon or a box in the room that we don't need to. We'll essentially only destroy something that has the dest destructible tag on it. So we've set it to destructible and that's pretty much it for this. Just double checking mobility is unmovable, that's fine. Cause it's all gonna have, it's not gonna be baked. So with that done, what we can actually look into now is setting up our weapon. So by default, we have the, uh, if I find the right folder, VR template, blueprints, we have the pistol, which fires a projectile. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use the projectile to destroy the walls themselves. It's already set up and we can adjust it. So we're gonna double click this. What we wanna do is basically get the collision of the object that we're hitting. So we're gonna drag off other component search for collision type. So get collision object type. And you'll see that we've got an enum to get a value out. We can drag off this and we can do an equal, equal brackets enum. And that allows us to check to see if the component we're getting is destructible. So with the destructible component, we can do a branch. And we're gonna do this from false because the walls aren't simulating physics. So we can keep this like so. And then what we can do is we can actually set the visibility before dragging off there. I'm gonna do it from the other component. So we'll set visibility, set this to true. And then we're also going to get the collision and we're gonna drag off, we'll do set collision. And we wanna set the collision object type. Actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set, set collision enabled. So when we shoot it, we're gonna make it invisible and then we're gonna set the collision to no collision. So what we could do in theory is actually add all the elements that we're hiding to an array. Uh, we could do this by using an interface and going to the wall mesh itself and storing it in there, which might not be a bad shout, but for now, we're actually gonna just do it this way and I might do another follow-up video where we change that around just to show you as many ways of doing this as possible. So if we do file, save all, we can actually hop over to the headset and we'll take a look. Is we can go to our environment actors, wall face, and we can see that we've got it in here at the minute, it's quite large. So on the X, I believe, let's do a guess. Is that the right axis? Yep. We can actually go in and change this to be a lot smaller. So 0.3, let's do 0.2. Hit compile and save. File once it's done. 
Though once we've updated it, we can literally just do another build and test that out. So I'll be right back. Just a, a recap of what we've done. We used the Chaos Fracture tools inside of Unreal Engine to create a mesh, which is broken up into 200 different pieces. And then we attached that to a blueprint. So our wall blueprint, so wall face, all of those are in there with a new collision channel set to destruct destructible. And what that allows us to do is it gets our projectile to check to see if the overlapping object is destructible and if it is we're simply just setting the visibility to hidden and then set collision enabled to no collision and that allows us to actually hide those and actually shoot through the holes that we create and it, what it would let you do is just cycle back through all 200 elements of these objects and then set the collisions back to destructible and then set the visibility to, to true so you can actually see it again if you were to restart the game. So for now, we'll leave it there and I'll see you next time. Bye.